in Second Peter 2, the explanation from last week's lesson. All right, let us, hello everybody. Glad you all made it. God bless you all for being here. Uh, we thank God for being out here on Wednesday night. We thank God for Evangelist Burton and for Deacon uh, Paul Ford for teaching last week. And we're going to be tonight in 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Our Father God, we come in the name of Jesus thanking you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be out here for another Wednesday night. We thank you, Father, for just the uh, attendance, and Father God, those that are hungry for the word, we ask you to take our minds off our dealings and let us concentrate on you right now. We give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. We're going to be in first, uh, Second Peter chapter three. We're going to start with Second Peter chapter two, and we're going to answer some of the questions. Of course, when uh, on last week we had a couple of questions that Evangelist Burton gave me for homework, and I'm so glad that I'm able to come out here <laughs> answer some of these questions. And also, I call, I phoned a friend. Amen. And I have uh, Reverend Lorenz Roseman out. And we're going to go right into the two questions. Two questions. First of all, we want everyone to turn to Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to answer these two questions that uh, Evangelist Burton gave me for homework. And the first question uh, was about the fallen angels. This came from 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 4, where it says about, it mentions in both Peter and also Jude about these fallen angels. And the question came from, this is King James Version, it says, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to reserve for that unjudgment. This is chapter six, right at the beginning, it actually covers this. And we just had a discussion prior to coming on the air uh, we were having a discussion, Evangelist Burton and Reverend Roseman, these theologians were discussing this back and forth, and we're going to bring Reverend Roseman up to kind of describe both of those answers. Second question uh, that it, it deals with is actually uh, uh, dealing with uh, Noah. And through that, actually in Genesis chapter 6, both of these answers are going to be covered. So we're going to have Reverend Roseman come up, and briefly he's going to describe Number one, about these angels and where they come from, which is actually referenced Genesis 6, as you saw this. And then secondly, we're going to go back into Noah, and we'll get this explanation, and Evangelist Burton is going to come up and describe that. So I'm giving the homework back to them. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord one more time. So the question is uh, about the angels and their fallen state uh, that are in that are locked in, in bondage. And who are these angels? In Genesis uh, chapter six, uh, starting at verse one, it says that it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. Uh, verse uh, two, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Verse three says, and the Lord said, my spirit sh shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Verse 4, there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, these were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And the Lord saw the wickedness of man that was great on earth. And so it goes on to describe what was, what was happening. And so the sons of God, according to the book of Job, are angels. When it says that the sons of God presented themselves, were presenting themselves to God, that Satan was among them, 
inquiring about Job. You use the same word uh, to describe them and Job. And these uh, angels are uh, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, that they were attractive, physically attractive. And when it says they lost they, their first state, so that they somehow were able to become physical beings in order to mate with these women. And as a result of these, uh, um, this uh, mating between these uh, angels and these women, there were these abnormal creatures created. The Bible called them giants or men of renown. Uh, these were these angels that uh, were um, uh, these, these, these off breed of these falling creatures. And what the objective was, was to destroy the human race by, by spreading these gigantic, these, these abnormal creatures so that there would be no pure human race because it was through Adam and the woman that the promise of the Messiah that was going to come and crush the head of Satan. So Satan thought that if he can corrupt all flesh, that he could somehow prevent the birth of the Messiah. So he came to corrupt the uh, to corrupt all of the uh, the uh, all of Adam's descendants, and he would have. He would have, because the Bible says all flesh had corrupted itself, which is to say in some way that all flesh had become contaminated with the blood of these giants, except Noah and his descendants. So the flood did not come simply to punish them, but it came to save humanity. Oftentimes we miss that about the flood. If the flood had not come, then there's a possibility that all the flesh, all of humanity would have been that would have been corrupted and there would have been no pure human race left. So the flood came and washed away everyone else and left them and they were to repopulate. Now, because these angels had had this great power <coughs> to mate with children of men, God put them in bondage so that they wouldn't have the ability or the power to corrupt mankind. Now, if you think about how greedy and how hungry men are for power, how many men you think would give their daughters that they might have giants, off-breed, part human and part angel, to have this type of race? And so God did that. He kept them, and so he put them in preserve. So that's the answer. Uh, to the question is uh, part one. Did y'all get it? These beings. It makes sense, huh? Did you did you get? Does it make? Hopefully, I don't think it makes sense. Yeah, hopefully, because you know I, I wouldn't prepare to do that. <laughs> Amen. No, that was wonderful. So we thank God for that, and that's an explanation hey. on these yeah. angels. Now, uh, before we go further, Evangelist Burton, come up and 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 describe what we're talking about with Noah. Come on up. Tell us about Noah. Now, now you had the proper answer about Noah. Okay, that was the second question that Jackie Gray, who's not here, by the way, hopefully she's watching it on air because she was throwing out all these questions. As I, I said, "Ben, listen, she, I think she's just messing with Cynthia." But anyway, he messes his burden. But let's, let's talk about Noah real quick because it's, it's it's important. So, hello, everybody. Hi. Well. I don't know what I'm supposed to be answering. Noah, Noah, about 120 years. Okay, the question arose that did Noah preach 120 years? And we grew up as Christians coming through church. We were taught that he preached 120 years that it was going to rain. But running references on that, the Bible never stated how long he preached. Mm -hmm. um, when you do some background reading, thanks to like, Reverend Roseman said, thanks to modern technology, it said that he preached 
probably 75 years maybe or less or, or for him to build the ark. So we really, Lifeline, huh? No, that's right. Go ahead. 20 years to build the ark. 120 years to build the ark. Mm -hmm. And he probably, um, I guess, what, what was the 75 years? I was reading something. See, you can't follow everything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so just to clear up the question, um, it, the Bible basically did not say that he preached 120 years that it was going to rain. It just basically talked about him building the ark. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. And that's all we wanted. I love to give it back to her because she let her give me stuff. So I like to give it right back to her. Okay. Amen. God bless y'all. Yeah, Donnie. I have a question. I'm a little bit late. Okay. Uh, but Rose was talking about the angels. Yes. That came and yes. Uh, was with the woman. Yeah. That part I'm not understanding. Did God create them to be that way, where they could have those type of feelings? Or? No, 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 no. We're all talking about rebellious angels. Yeah, That's what we're talking about, rebellious angels. So understand right now, and we're going to get into a little bit of this during the last days, that God created everything good and perfect, good and perfect. However, there's rebellion. Now, the rebellion, who's the, who's the root of rebellion? Satan. Satan. Satan, therefore. So we have angels that are actually under the influence of Satan, the prince of the world. Think about this. He's the prince of the world. So everything that God made good and perfect, Satan comes and he wars. So keep that in mind. So when we're talking about these angels, just think about being rebellious angels. What Reverend Rosemont was dealing was having a contaminated human uh, race, if you would, right? That's what he's talking about right now. Not pure race, but then have mixed with you know, all these things that an angel would bring. We uh, will save the deeper conversation with that for another time, because I want to get to something that I believe is crucial right now. Tonight we're dealing with, I want everyone to get this, people out there on TV land, amen, I love to say that. Uh, first lady, I would say, you're on, you're on the internet, TV land, I'm speaking this in existence, TV land. Uh, one of the things is that we want to learn how to, and this is what, uh, I entitled this when I put out a, a message, living a godly life during the last days. Living a godly or a righteous life during the last days. Think about it. We want to live right now. Would you agree that we're in the last days? Yes. We're living in the last days. This is the beginning of the end of the last days. So we're going to we're going to reference something in Matthew 25, but Matthew 24 talks about all these different things. The word that I have Paul write up here is called apostasy, okay? It says from the Greek word apostasia means a defiance of an established system of authority, a rebellion, an abandonment, or a breach of faith, a falling away of the faith. That's what we're going to be talking about. In the last days, what will happen is people are going to <laughs> abandon the faith. They're going to leave Christianity. They're going to leave the ways that God has for us to make it to glory. They're going to start following wives' tales, fables, made up stuff. That's why I like what Evangelist Burton said when she said about 120 years and we were said this and taught that. What the Bible don't say, it ain't true. You got me? There's a lot of things that are said that sound church like. And that we may speak in church, but it's not really in the Bible. Some of the stuff we say, uh, like, like for instance, they're a saying that say we ought to watch, fight, and pray. Is that what the Bible say? Yeah. Is that what the Bible say? No. Everybody will say, is that what the Bible say? Say, say you think that's what the Bible? We ought to watch, fight, and pray. You heard of that? It says watch and pray. We say, watch, fight, and pray. Why? Because that's what the song said. <laughs> and there's a lot of things, watch this, that are we say that are in the Bible. Some things I'll say, even as I'm preaching. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'll go back and listen and say, that wasn't right. Cleanliness is next to God. Yeah, cleanliness, that, that's another one. So it's a lot of things that we hear and, and that we have to really be cognizant of what we hear or what's said in church. Or what's said in a religious format versus what's said in the Bible. Y'all get what I say, I'm saying right now. Yes. 
Because as we come in in the last days, the Bible tells us to study to what? And it's not talking about in general just studying, but you individually, you, 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 you need to study. Don't just take what the pastor says, what any preacher says, what a deacon says, what T.D. Jake says, what Eddie Long said, well, Eddie ain't gonna say, but whatever it is that people out there saying, don't just because they said it does not mean that it's the Bible. Okay? So you go back and study. This is what I recommend. Hey, Eric, how you doing, brother? You look good. This is what I recommend to everybody here. And this is where we're at. Is that everyone in here needs to take and you get your notepad, you take your phone out, you get your Bible, and you make certain that you're going back and you're reading it and studying the word for yourself. Amen, amen. I, 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 I accept you. I, I admonish you. I challenge you to go back and read everything that I preach about, that I teach about. Go back and check it and double check it. Right. I'm, I, I want you to do this. I want you to call me and say, Pastor, you said such and such, but I was looking and I see something a little different. I want you to do that because that's the only way you're going to grow yourself. Understand, I, I got a call this week from Pastor R.J. Bradley, my pastor. Uh, my pastor that I say my pastor, that's the one that when I was raised in the ministry, that's my father in the ministry. He's going through a lot and he was going through, uh, he's actually uh, stage four cancer and he's uh, stage four lung cancer. And it doesn't appear like he's going to pull through. And one of the things that he was telling me, he was saying, I'm proud of you. And he says, I, I left the church, you know, in your hands and different things like that. And he says, I, I admonish you, Calvin, to go back and keep going to school, go get some work and continue to work and hone your skills and continue to get deeper and deeper into that work. Yeah. He says, he's telling me that. He says, this is what I need you to do. And I said, yes, sir. I am going to follow that. Because what happens is everyone in here is saying, we have to really get prepared for the last days. The last days. And what happens, I don't care how long you've been in, in church, I don't care how much of the Bible you know, is that you have to constantly go over things over and over again. You got to constantly study things. You forget things. And then also because of your life and what's happening, certain things are relevant now that weren't 10 years ago, right? depending on where you're at. So right now, we're in a state with Donald Trump as president. <laughs> Pay attention. Because as these things, you're going to find a lot of people going away from the faith. A lot of people following a old wives' tale. Right. A lot of people, a lot of teachers coming up with different type of teaching. So we have to really be on top of it ourselves. Now, with that said, First Lady, First Lady Pam. Yes, sir. Okay, I, uh, with this, I want us to uh, listen. Everybody turn to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. And uh, I want you all to hear as Kirk Franklin in this version is going through and explaining uh, this. So listen, listen to it. Hopefully she can get that loud and clear and we can hear this. 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Uh oh, so we ain't ready for that. Okay, we're ready. My, my, my wife, my sound tech here, boy, she be working me. I just went back. She can find out, make sure we're in, in charge. We're ready. Okay, let me go back. Let's, let's keep talking as they get this together. But uh, any questions before we start in here? Understand one of the things I want you all to get is that during these last days, when people are going to start falling away from the faith, we're also going to go into a couple more scriptures. Uh, I'm going to 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4. The Holy Prophets. Here we go. And the command, right. dear friends. All right, start up. This okay, is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them and as I've been to stimulate you to hold some thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets, and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, 
scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, yes. not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless <coughs> and fall from your secure position, mm -hmm. but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Was that good? That was, that was awesome to me. And this is where we're at. So understand, apostasy is the defiance of the establishment. Defiance, watch this. In our sense, we want to talk about the strain from the word of God, the falling away. What happens throughout biblical times, you have these different sects who have come up with certain things that where they take the word of God and they warp it. Yeah. They take the word of God and they take bits and pieces right. and then they go off into a tangent. Like for instance, I'll give you one and key. Jehovah's Witness. Yes. Yes. Pay attention. They take it and they warp the word. You understand? And they take it and they turn it. You know, so we have to always be careful about people who even add extra stuff. Right. Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. They take and they add certain things, right. which is always problematic. If you look at the end of Revelation, it said, don't add anything to the word of God. Don't take away. Don't add or take away. The word of God is the word of God. So if you have people come and they warp it for what they wanted to say, and this is where we're at, understand people will take bits and pieces of the word and they warp it. That's Satan. That's what Satan did. You know when he did it? He did it right in the beginning with Adam and right. Eve, with Eve. You remember how he took the word of God and he warped it? He said this. He, let's, let's look real quick. Let's go look at Genesis. Let's look at Genesis uh, when he encountered Genesis chapter 3. Let's look at, look, at, look at how Satan is a master manipulator. Say master manipulator, everybody. Master yeah, manipulator. yeah. He, he's <laughs> taken and he, he goes and he manipulates the word of God. He takes it and he he changes it. He It says, watch this. Genesis chapter 3, and I'm going to read it myself. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to woman, listen, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? 
This is, this, let me read it again. He says here, now serp, now, now the serpent, this is Satan. Y'all do know this is Satan, right? Was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Is that what God said? Nope. Is that what God said? Yeah. Did he go, did he come to, to Adam and Eve and say, you can't eat from any of these trees? Nope. No. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. That is not what he said. Now, the key is, why is he taking what sounds right and twisting it? What he did with this, he made God seem as if he's mean, that he doesn't want them to have the great things, that he didn't even, he, he's tight, he's a tight wad, he don't want you to have nothing. God didn't say that. God has said that you can eat from any of the trees except what tree? So he did the, the exact opposite of what God said. Y'all get it? Yes. I'm trying to let you understand. And later on, it goes about all the different things that he did with Eve to get her, watch this, and this is what I want y'all to think, get her thinking, get her already, watch this, enticed that we study about in James. Only things that can entice us is what we want in the first place. The things that we have propensity to want. Eve is already walking around like, I want some of that tree. I want some of that. I really, really want that. I know God said I can have it, but I want that. And therefore, Satan starts to mess with your mind. This is how he gets us. Now, I'm telling you all this because in the last days, we got to stay in the word. Yes. If not, we're going to get off track. And people can tell us stuff that sound good, sound church-like. Pay attention. You'll see how the master manipulators get up and they tell folks what they want to hear. Mm. We're going to break down this, this scripture, but let's let's look at a couple of scriptures right now. I'm gonna have. I'm actually going to read it because I, I for time's sake, I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna have Reverend Roseman talk about it a little real quickly. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let all y'all talk about it before I go there. Let's go look at First uh, uh, Peter chapter four. Everybody, First Timothy. First Timothy. I'm sorry. First Timothy chapter four. I had a in, in this in this lesson, I don't know if you caught it, right at the end, Peter, which is interesting, he references Paul. He references, did y'all catch that at the end? We're going to go back and read it. But right at the end of what we just read in 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter, who's the writer of this? Y'all know who Peter is, right? Who's Peter? Who's Peter? Who's Peter? Y'all tell me who Peter is. Come on, tell me. He's the rock. He's the one who was part of the center circle. Y'all got who Peter is, right? Peter, James, and John. That's the same Peter. But he references Paul. Who is Paul? Donnie, who's Paul? The apostle. Was he one of the original 12 disciples? No. How did how did he become an apostle? What happened? One born out of due season. He was hit by light on his way to prison. Right. On the road to Damascus, he was a persecutor, right? He was Saul. But right now, Peter, in the ministry, references the teaching of Paul. I'm telling you all this now because we're going to Timothy. Timothy is actually, that book of Timothy is actually written by the Apostle Paul. And this is apostasy. This is talking about in the last days, right? In the last days. Now turn with me. What did I say? Timothy? First Timothy. Timothy. First Timothy. Four. I said chapter four. Yes. And what, what did I say? Oh, I, first four. Four. One, first four. four. I said one? No. First, first Timothy, Timothy first chapter Timothy, one. Four. First four. Timothy. Chapter four. First Timothy. All right. I don't write as good first as Paul. First Timothy Let's chapter see. four. Man, I wish I had that right like so that. Do I, Pastor. I need to go back to school and take out some image First <laughs> Timothy chapter four. <laughs> Verse, let's just do one and two. That's good enough. One and two. Read, uh, let's find it. Can I have somebody come read that for me real quick? Come on, Leona, you ain't been here in a minute. First Timothy <laughs> chapter four, verses one and two. Just read it real quick. All right. Man, I can't write. Oh, it looks so good. Make me look bad. 
Okay. <laughs> Had him come up right. Come on, just read it. The subtitle warnings against false teachers. Yes. Apostasy. Go ahead. Last now days. the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time some will turn away from the true faith. Yes. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Just stop. That's good enough. Is that all two? No. Go that keep was going. Just one. Okay, keep going. Two. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their conscious conscious are dead. That's two. Good. Stop for a minute. Let's see. Let's think about what she said. Clearly, in the last days, keep going. They will say it is wrong to be married. No, no, no. Go oh, back to go one. Back to one. one. Go read one again. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from true faith. Stop. Who said it? What she read. Who said it? The Holy Spirit. Who is Holy Spirit? God, the Holy Spirit, is telling us right now in your life, in the last days, we're going to have some who are going to come. What did read? Read it some more. They will turn away from true faith. They will come and they will turn away from true faith. I think I'm going to preach one day. I'm going to have you read that. Stop. I like that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So understand in the last days, the Holy Spirit is talking and saying, some, look around. Some of us in here are going to fall away from the faith. Think about that. That's what that's where, where Paul is telling Timothy. He's admonishing Timothy, his son, who's gonna go out and have to run the church. He's letting him know that around you, within the, the people you're pastoring, Timothy, you're gonna have some in here who's gonna fall away from the faith. Now, before we even get into that, why? Tell me why, Donnie. Why? Why, Donnie? Why? Why is some of us gonna fall away from the faith? We're gonna be deceived. Why? Because of lack of knowledge. There you go. There you go. You heard what Donnie said? It's going to be deceived because lack of knowledge. We often say he admonishes us to study. Right? Didn't Paul say that? Yeah. Study. To show yourself approved unto God. A workman that will not be ashamed that can rightly divide the word of truth. Everybody in church ain't in the word. Right. And if you're not in the word, how how easy is it for you to be manipulated? Very, very easily. Have you ever noticed, don't answer, this is a rhetorical question, don't answer, but have you ever noticed when you're not in the word, how Satan can mess with you? He can heat you up and spit you out when you're not in the word. But when you're in the word, you're sharper. And you're like, ah, wait a minute, I recognize you, Satan. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get it. It's a difference in the word versus out of the word. Tell it. Shake your head. Every one of us, including me. I can tell when I'm really studying the word versus when I am, when I'm just going through the motions. First lady asked me just now, she said, how do you know these scriptures? We're driving this up. How do you know? How do you just throw out a scripture? That's because I'm studying. But when I ain't, I forget. Right? If I'm studying, I can get it. If I ain't studying, I'm out of it, right? It's a big difference. So we have to study. Why? So we won't get easily manipulated. So Satan won't catch us slipping. Keep going, lay it on one two again. This again. Go, you already read one, read two. These people are hypocrites and liars. Stop, we're talking about the teachers. Right. These people who are taking and warping the word. They're hypocrites and they lie. Watch this. If someone is taking the word and they're taking and warping it, they a liar. They lying on God. And they're hypocritical. Think about that. We got some, some teachers that are going to rise up. And they're going to be hypocrites and they're going to be liars. We got some folks right now who will manipulate the word for, they, for money. For money. Manipulate the word for get what they want. There's an African preacher that was uh, featured all over who was telling the, the women, the African women, y'all see that? About uh, well, I ain't going to get into it, but it was some bad stuff. Mm -hmm. He was manipulated because he wanted to get these weak-willed women who are not in the word. You can tell tell somebody anything if you saying God said it. God ain't said you got to study your word. Where, where where God said that at? If you don't know, then you'll listen to it. And you're like, oh, people call follow Jim Jones because they were really some of them were really trying to follow God. 
But if you don't know any better, you would have got on that that uh, little uh, tri uh, vehicle and mm -hmm. taken the vehicle yeah, to right. glory. Mm -hmm. So you got to study the word because the last day is going to be a lot of evil that, that's, that's, that's coming out that people will just follow, you know? And Lord knows we're under a nation right now who's not following God. And I believe in my heart, that's one of the reasons why I've been punished with this, this guy, 1 Corinthians. Oh, go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> And their consciences are dead. That's it. And their conscience, thank you, Leona. And their conscience, we're talking about their internal, they're, they're, it's dead. They are totally dead. They don't care what they're doing. It's some people out there that will do some teaching. They don't care nothing about, have no fear of God. Right. No fear of God. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you are a godly man or woman, you have a fear of God. You won't just be manipulating, making folks to get some money. Or to get some whatever you're trying to get, because you have a fear of God. I got a fear of God. I ain't gonna. I ain't trying to leave nobody there. I know I got to pay account of that. I know what the word says. It says that I got to pay account for they soul. If I leave folks off into to a uh, hell, I got to pay account for that. I ain't trying to. Hey, hey, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get the glory. I ain't gonna miss it because I want some money down here. Are you kidding me? You see, I don't want to do that. So these are saying these people they they dead they conscious does that make sense? Yes. So pay attention in the last day. This is where we're at. We don't get break it down. Now let's go to uh, I gave you first Timothy. Let's go to second Timothy. Second Timothy, come on up here, Reverend. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy four is a scripture that we use for preachers. I'm just gonna say one through. I don't know. What, what are you going through? Uh, one through what? One through, uh, one through what? Come on, man. Come five, on, man. One through five. Six, okay. One know. through six. All right. Five to six. Come on. Don't be shaky. Come on. Handle it. Can you see it? Yeah, I can that, see that. I can see that. Okay. Uh, in uh, Second uh, Timothy uh -huh. chapter four, yes. starting at verse one, it says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who would judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth yeah. and be turned aside to fables. But you but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Well, I am ready being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. That's good enough. Okay, Reverend, tell me now with, now, watch this. Everybody, I'm going to stay up here with uh, Reverend Roseman. Keep in mind what you just read. Okay. Okay. Now, I want everyone to turn with me back to 2 Peter chapter 3, and I'm getting ready to read something to you. I'm going to see if it parallels. Remember, what he just read was taught by the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. This is Apostle Paul, okay? Here's Apostle Paul, right? Here's Apostle Peter, okay? I'm the Apostle Peter. This is Apostle Paul. Let's see if we're on the same page, okay? Apostle, Apostle Peter, I'm, I'm muted there. Apostle Peter, <laughs> he says this. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and to command and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Verse 3. Apostle Peter, right? Apostle Paul. Listen to it. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. 
then will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestor dies, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. I'm going to stop right there. That's four, four verses. Listen to what he said. Listen to what, what Paul said. I charge you, uh, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, mm -hmm. but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. That's good enough. Now watch. Mine says, you must understand in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing, following their own evil desires. And ever since their ancestors died, everything goes on just the way it is. You see where we're going here? It's the same message. During last days, there are going to be scoffers. There are going to be people who are going to come up and tell you things that are contrary to the word of God. What, what, the, what the apostle Paul is telling his son Timothy is to understand you got to be instant. You got to be prepared. You got to be ready because in the evil day, folks are going to come in saying all kind of nonsense. Does this make sense to you all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have y'all heard some crazy stuff? Absolutely. Have you heard some crazy stuff in church or if not in church, on TV, you're watching TV, and you're like, I don't know if that's right. Yeah. Your spirit may say, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have that? You ever be listening to stuff? And the Bible tells you, what about the spirit? Evangel did, Evangel's burden about the spirit. Test what? It's the spirit, whether it be of God or not. Absolutely. So does your spirit ever say, maybe you don't know exactly what's going on, but you're listening to something, or you're hearing something, and your spirit is saying, I don't know if it's right. Well, that was like Omarosa. She has put out that everybody has to bow down to Donald Trump. Who? Mm -hmm. oh. Omarosa. Bow down? To Donald Trump. Is that right? <laughs> Let me ask y'all something. Is that right? No. Do you need to bow down to Donald Trump? To Trump? No. How about this? Do you need to bow down to Obama? No. Did you need to bow down to Bush? No. Did you need to bow down to any man? No. no. Okay. So there it goes. Antichrist. Well, there it goes. So understand we're reading this, and this is why I wanted him to come up with this. Because you yeah. had. Peter giving a warning. Yeah, Paul giving a warning. And right now, we need to heed to the warning. So what we have to do is understand that it's so important for you to know the word yourself. You know, I had a discussion with Donnie, as Dick and Donnie, a couple of weeks ago about us as believers and why we as believers aren't coming out to get the word. We have people who come right now to church and they'll come in Late and leave early. Mm -hmm. Come in, maybe listen to the choir, get a little bit of this, and gone. Mm -hmm. Miss the whole word. Right? And watch this. How about this? How about you all? Come to church, hear the preacher preach, and go home. What the preacher preach? I don't know, but the show was good. <laughs> it sounds good. I don't know, but boy, we were shouting today. We had a hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Pastor really spoke. What are you talking about? I don't have a clue, but it was good. It had to be good. It had to be good. Oh, it was good. Boy, we had good church today. We had good. I, I felt good. What I did? I don't know nothing. Where are you coming from? I don't have a clue. What are you talking about? I don't know. What are you coming for? The idea is for you to get wisdom and understanding. You cannot grow if you just come to church. Right? That's why we all have to come in and study. Shame on you if you don't come and you don't bring a no, no pad. I used to say no pad. Bring you some kind of pad, iPad, no pad, phone pad, something like that, and make sure you get the word. Make sure you highlight it. And the key is it does no good unless you're going back and studying it yourself. 
Shema, I used to always have this, and, and I'm going to get on of my horse in a minute, but uh, people would come to church and they bring their Bibles and they throw their Bible in the back of the car and they get it out when they come to church Sunday. Dust it off. What, what good is that? <coughs> Tell y'all why. Tell you the key. Do you not shame on you if you're not taking what we are studying tonight and going back and studying? We study it. Mm -hmm. Re-reading it again. Getting it in your spirit so you can actually get where the word can go from just on paper to get into your heart. You need to have this as coming in evil days. When you come in and these scoffers, these people are telling you what's going on and it sounds good and all that, unless you understand the word, you're going to be just like Eve. You're going to be eaten up by Satan. He's going to eat you up. Didn't God say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? You're like, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. From any tree in the garden? Yeah. Any tree in the garden? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah, God is mean, ain't he? Mm -hmm. He told me I can't eat from any tree in the garden. Yeah, that kind of sounds You understand? Because we don't know it for fact. We don't know it factual. It's not in our spirit. So if we know that, then when that's read, we can say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That ain't that ain't what he said. Right. That's not what he said. That's not what I read. That's not what I studied. That's what I not what I know to be fact. So important. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, before we go any further, thank you, Reverend. I gotta sit him down because he'll sit up and teach all day. Amen. Okay. <laughs> First Timothy chapter three. Amen. Five. But watch this. Win three five. But deliberately forget. That long ago, watch this, it said, ever since it's been saying on and on to the break of dawn. But deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By the waters, also the world of time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. I just want to read that because now I want to get into eight. Now, we're getting ready to go into eight. Verse eight. Donnie, come up and read for us verse eight. Now, understand what we've been doing with, with this, where, where Peter is actually talking about, he's getting ready to go and understand we're going to read eight and nine. Read eight and nine. First Timothy three. Second Timothy three. Second Peter, no, we're in Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three now, back to our lesson. Okay? So understand that God, even though he says, okay, the end is coming, the end is coming. What I just read was an under explanation of what God manifested during all these times. He did a lot. Now look what he says in these verses. Verses nine, eight, I'm sorry, verses eight and nine. Look what God, look what, what God is saying through Peter. Look what he's saying. Go ahead, Donnie. But do not ignore mm -hmm. this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like one day. Okay, stop. What does that mean? What does that mean, Donnie? One day with the Lord is a thousand is a thousand years for men. Okay. Did everybody get that? Does everybody understand what that's saying? Say it again, Donnie. Give an explanation. A thousand years. Go ahead. From a thousand years and go back. God is, is, I'm sorry. One one day with God is a thousand years for men. Okay. All right. Watch. Now we often talk about our loved ones. Our loved ones. Loved ones. Say, uh, anybody have a grandmother gone? Yeah. All right. How long ago did she die? Seven. 2007. We'll go with 2007. 2007, your grandmother died. 2007. All right, this is 2017, 10 years ago. Okay, in God's sight, about how long has that been? Fraction of a second. Huh? Fraction of a second. Okay. Say fraction of a second. Second. Say one second. So you. So watch this. Your mother passed how long ago? Almost seven. Seven years ago. Seven years ago. You miss her. Right? Oh, yeah. Miss her desperately. Mm. Watch this. In God's sight and in heaven, in heaven, where she would be, okay, with the Lord, they've been dead, not even a second. 
think about this. So we often say about our loved one, oh, they've been gone so long. Oh, it's been so long and all that. Our time is not like God's time. Our ways are not like his. We can't even conceptualize it. So when we're thinking about well, where's our loved ones and all that, oh, our loved ones have been gone forever. And anybody you have ever known ain't been gone for a second or two. Anybody. Your great, 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 great grandparents ain't been gone but a couple of seconds. So when you get up to glory, it's not going to be like, oh, you've been waiting for me forever. They ain't even went to heaven yet. They ain't went through or they ain't went through nothing. They just there. You got me? So I want you to understand God as we go on. The time as we understand it is, is not, it doesn't even make sense to what we say. So when we're talking about, oh, it's been so long, and uh, Jesus, Jesus has been dead all these years, you know? All these years, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, it just happened. <laughs> the cross thing just happened. Salvation just happened. It ain't, it ain't been in them for three days. Okay, think about that. Then he died, the salvation. So all these things that are manifesting, and we're like, oh, at the end of time of revelation, all that stuff is all right here on the tip. So don't think that God has forgotten. He ain't forgotten nothing. He's not slack, the Bible says, regarding his promise. Look at it. Read the next one. The Lord is not slow about his promise. As some think of slowness, but, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Amen. Did you get it, Donnie? What is that saying? Basically, he doesn't want to lose any of his, of his children. He right. wants everybody to, to be saved. Everybody say, please be patient with me. God's waiting on me. <laughs> God's waiting on me. He's waiting for you to get it together. He don't want to lose you. He don't want you to get left behind, so he's working with you. He's giving you time. He's working with you. Pamela! <laughs> My wife's supposed to be in Bible study. Anyway, all right, all right. I'm sorry, y'all. I get like that. All right, because <laughs> I, I wanted her to have some input. Okay, all right. Verse 10. Verse 10. Who wants to read? Anybody want to read? All right. Come on, Eric. Come stand up here. Go ahead. Eric's going to come up and read. Go from 10 all the way to uh, 13. Right, verse 10. But the day of the Lord. 10 to what? 10, 10 to 13. 10 to 13. Mm -hmm. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the Lord like the elements will be Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Mm -hmm. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. Well, I love it. Amen. Amen. That, that's 13. No, sir. Keep going. 12. <clears throat> As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. Mm -hmm. 13. But in the keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, what Eric just read for us, these few verses, 13, uh, 10 all the way down to 13. Understand what this is talking 10 is talking about coming judgment. Okay? He's going to come and he's going to judge. How is he going to judge the earth? Last time it was by water. 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 This time by fire. 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 That's what this is talking about. Okay? And it says since all these things are going to happen and you know it, how should you live? Huh? Should you live a holy life? Yes. Do you know the end is coming? Yes. Do you fear God? Yes. You want to be caught slipping? No. All right, Paul. Paul, come here real quickly. I want I wanted Paul to read uh, Matthew chapter twenty five. I'm gonna write this down in my writing, not his meek writing. Matthew chapter twenty five. Just read a little, 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 little bit of this. Read, read some of it about these verses. Okay. Uh, Matthew twenty five. It says, then shall, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 
ten virgins, mm -hmm. which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Mm -hmm. That they were foolish, uh, that they were foolish, uh, took their lamp uh, and took no oil with them. Mm -hmm. But the wise took oil in their vessels with, good with their lamps. Mm -hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And, and I, I'm gonna have to go into. Sorry, but I snapshot there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, verse six, mm -hmm. and at midnight they were roused by the shout, mm -hmm. look, the bridegroom is coming, come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Mm -hmm. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Mm -hmm. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. Mm -hmm. But while they were gone uh, to buy the oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready uh, went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bride, uh, bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. Uh, so you took, or I'm sorry, so you too uh, must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Amen. Now. From what Paul read, Paul, would you like to explain this, or you want someone else to explain? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of go into it. Uh -huh. um, but so basically, this is um, some of the parables that uh, Jesus is teaching in, and he, he's talking about you know the kingdom of heaven and where there's going to be some foolish people. Um, there, there's going to be you know, people that are prepared to go, and, and this, this is what I'm what I'm believing. Mm -hmm. This is this is what, what this is saying. Uh, some will be foolish and some will be prepared, um, as if the the bride uh, the bridegroom. Um, so I think some of the five that were foolish, the way I look at this is they were going out to meet him, thinking they're going to meet him right now. Mm -hmm. So we only need we don't need uh, oil for our lap. Mm -hmm. And then the others who actually prepared, they say, well, it may not happen right now. You know, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna prepare ourselves for what could happen yes. or for the, the, like they said, the Terry, where they were delayed. You know, the bride, the bridegroom actually delayed his showing up. So um, in other words, we don't know when that's gonna happen. Uh, so, you know, because because of the, the delay. Um, and I'm trying to think of where, where else I need to. That's perfect. So that's not, you got something to say, Jackie? Stay here. No, you <laughs> Good. Anybody else got anything to say with this? That was excellent, Paul. You have some? That's right. There you go. That's a good one. That's a ghetto way of saying it. Yeah, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Yes, Donnie. But then the other part, if you're not ready when it comes to that time, when you come before him, he's going to say, I don't know you. Yep. Yep. He don't know you. So we want to make sure knowing to knowledge. So we want to be prepared. Everybody's like, I got to be prepared. Yeah. Right? Because we don't know when he's going to come. We know that the, there's signs of the time, but we don't know. We don't know if he's coming tomorrow. We don't know if he's coming next month, next year, 100 years from now, 200 years from now. That's not our job to know everything. Now watch this, everybody. The problem is right now, and I want everybody to get this, because we're getting ready to close. I'm actually going to have to pick this up again next week. We're going to pick up in verse 14 next week, okay? We're going to go through verse 14 and we're going to go through Jude next week because I'm going to stop. I like to stop on time, okay? But one of the things I want everyone here to understand and I want you to get, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to know all the Bible. You don't have to learn it all. But you need to understand the basics mm -hmm. of the Bible. Now, when someone starts telling you about salvation, you need to know how to get saved and you need to know that you are saved. You need to know about the resurrection. You need to know how he rose. These are things that are very important. Who Jesus was. All these things are extremely important. You don't have to know all the Bible. However, you should study and try to get as much as you can. 
press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Ain't got to know everything. So don't get up here and say, I ain't no theologian. I mean, theologian. I ain't Reverend Roseman. I don't know it all. I don't know the backwards and forwards and all. Don't worry about that. But learn the basics of the Bible and try to expand from that. Understand when people come in these last days, they're going to be hitting on things that sound right. But if you are not studying the word of God, you're going to get left back. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to know it all. You know some basics. And how are you going to get some basics? By getting in the word. And then the more and more you, and this is the way the word of God is, the more and more you learn, the more and more you want to learn. The more and more you want to get. Right? You ain't got to all of a sudden get up here and go, and say, I'm going to seminary school. Ain't nobody tell you to do that. <laughs> Get your butt to work. Get yourself, yourself a job. Learn how to do some things. And then you start getting to work. Start coming out and getting what you can. You know, it's a shame that we have Bible study and we can't get more folks out. It's horrible. Horrible. Sunday school. Can't get folks out. Mission. Can't get folks out. But what you're doing is so more, more important than this work. And the key is God wants to open you up and pour out blessings in your life. But watch this. He can only bless folks who invest in him. Mm, amen. If you ain't invest in him, he's like, why should I invest in you? What am I going to do for you? Well, why should I give you stuff? You ain't doing nothing for me. How you going to ask me for stuff? You ain't doing nothing for me. You ain't did the basics for me. You don't know nothing. And I know this is a hard way of teaching, but really think about it. Who do you invest in in your life? Are you pouring into folks who never pour into you? Seriously, are you pouring in folks who never do nothing for you? Think about it. Why would I care? I often tell people, if I don't know your voice, that means that we ain't that close. <laughs> Think about it. If you call me, if you call me and I can't pick up your voice, that means we ain't talk that much, right? That means that, that our relationship is not that strong. It's not not really. Because the folks, like, for instance, if First Lady called me, I'm like, oh, matter of fact, I, I ain't got to look at calling. If I hear her voice, I know who she is, right? If I hear some of y'all voice, I know who you are. But if I have to say, and who is this? And, and how do I know you? And when is the last time I talked to you? That means that we don't have that relationship strong. And I'm telling you that because God do the same to us. <laughs> you praying to him, he like, and who is this? And have I talked to you? Oh, I don't forgot. Oh, yeah, you are my child. Oh, yeah, you that, oh, you that child that I, I don't hear from ever. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you learn? And, and likewise, with the word of God, if you're reading something, if I'm teaching something, if I'm preaching every week, and this is the first time you ever heard what I'm preaching about, Houston, there's a problem. If I'm preaching, and you never know what I'm preaching about. Never, never. Some things you ain't going to know, because I, I be coming up with some stuff. I like, ooh, they ain't got this one here. Ooh, this is a deep one here. I be throwing it out. I be throwing I be trying to press uh, uh, impressed Reverend Roseman. I want him to like, oh, this is a good one here, Doc. This a, I ain't been off in this one. That's where I'll be going sometime. I'll take y'all there. But if I'm, I'm preaching about David and Goliath, this is the first time you ever heard it. Lord Jesus. Lord help us. If I'm I'm studying just the basics of, of, of uh, salvation or different things like that, and this is the first time you ever heard it, we got a problem. So therefore, we have to get in the Word. And the, the best way to do it, I uh, I was talking about Pastor Bradley earlier. Do you know how I got into the Word of God, saints, and we're getting ready to close? One of the things I did is that when I got saved, I was serious. I wasn't here to play. I wasn't here. Anything I did, I was good at. I wanted to master. If I was going to do it, I was going to do it to the fullest. I was going to give everything I had. If I didn't, I was going to cry about it. Am I right about it, Doug? 
Am I right about? I would cry about because I gave it all my all. So when I got saved, I wanted to know the word. I didn't want to just come to church. I had too much going on on Sundays. Yeah. I had a whole lot of good stuff happen on Sunday. I was trying to be a pro ball player. I was like, semi pro ball player. I'm like, I'm going to the pros. But I got man. I told my wife, baby, I'm going to the pros. She said, you, you bet. I said, I'm going to the pro. I was playing every Sunday. Okay, I was playing ball big time. I thought I was gonna make it. That was my other way after I got after I gave up on getting my club. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> that was possible. So when I came to church. I was serious about the word of God. And I wanted to get the word. So this is what I did. This is what I did, Doug. You know what I did? Whatever the preacher said, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. He said, I'm coming from 2 Timothy chapter 4. I wrote it down. And he said this, blah, blah, blah. And he said this, blah, blah, blah. And I studied backwards and forwards. Every time he said it, I went, I read it all, I regurgitated, and I re-preached it to myself. And I re-preached it. It had to make sense to me. And I had to make it make sense. And then I started getting to a state, I would say, well, I would have said it this way. And I would say every single thing that was preached, that was taught, every Bible study, every Sunday school, I wanted to know. Because I needed to make sure this Christianity thing was the right thing. Then other than that, I could have been a pro ball player. So I'm like, I got to make sure. Other than that, I could have been with my 40 ounce in my blood. But I didn't get that all up to get here. So I need to make sure this stuff is right. Y'all missed it. No. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. And because of that, God started investing back in me. My sister, God rest her soul, I would teach Bible study, and I would start teaching stuff. And she said, as I was teaching Bible study, I was doing this after two years, she was like, wait a minute, I've been in church all my life, all my life. How do you know this? Where did this come from? How do you know this? I've been in church two years. I could teach anything. I knew more than, 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 than 95% of the folks in the church. Why? Because I was studying and God was investing back in me. That's it. Lesson over. I'll stand up. We're going to pick up in verse 14 next week. I'm trying to help somebody. One or two of y'all. Amen. I don't know if I'm helping uh, uh, Pastor Dave, President.